This is a quick overview of the function object that we looked at in class. This is a really good way to create uh, envelopes. If you remember from the reading last week, an envelope uh, is most commonly used to allow you to control a change in amplitude or a change in volume over time. Uh, so a typical uh, envelope would be the attack, decay, sustain, release. Um, this function object allows you to draw whichever envelope you like, and the line object uh, basically reads through or ramps through these points uh, over a given duration. That duration can be set with a set domain message. So set domain and then a certain value in milliseconds. If we attach this message to the left inlet of the function object and click on this, you have to lock your patch and click on it, um, that will set the domain, which is the x-axis, the value of x in this. Uh, if you see right here, for example, the far right, it's um, 4,000, 3,900, 4,000. Um, and it will set the essentially the time that it takes to read through this plot. Um, if you want to get rid of a point on the function object, you can shift and click, uh, and it will delete a point. It's kind of a useful little, little tool. Um, and then you can create, not a toggle, but a button also attached to the left inlet. If we take a look at what the line object is doing, when I send a bang into the function object, over the course of four seconds, it will read from this value, zero up to 0.76, then down to 3.0, let's give it another shape, up to 0.76, and then back down. So it goes from zero up to 0.7, down to 0.3, up to 0.7, then back to zero. It just reads through all of this. As you can see, the um, y value here is between 0 and 1. Okay, so whatever we want to use, um, if we want to use this to control, uh, for example, a frequency, we have to scale that 0 and 1 to the appropriate frequency range that we want to use. Now, if you want to use this to control a gain slider, you're going to want to scale that between uh, 0 and 157 if you want it to go all the way up or between 0 and maybe 127 ish if you want it to go up to that level uh, basically this information that comes out of the line object you can then scale to whatever you need so between 0 and 1 which is the y value of the function object and we're going to scale it to let's say between um, let's say yeah, why not? One twenty uh, zero and one twenty seven. Now the function object is actually usually used um, in a slightly different way, which we're going to look at a little bit later. Usually, you don't connect it to to a gain slider like this, uh, but because right now we're developing a patch with which to trigger some cues. Uh, it could be useful, a useful tool to have um, uh, at the moment. Um, if you wanted, for example, the cue to start high and just ramp down, you could, of course, draw a shape like this. Um, so the volume will start high, it'll get progressively lower, and then it'll fade out faster at the end. If you want for it to sustain at a certain level and then ramp down, um, you could draw you know, a shape like that. There your cue would play, and then it would progressively get a little bit quieter. Um, let's throw a, uh, a sample in here, a playlist object, just to get a sense of what this actually is doing. Um, so again, this might be one of the cues uh, in your project. If you were to send this a one, as we saw in class, it'll play that. So when I were to, if I were to click this, it's going to play this uh, audio file at the vo volume of 127, and then after about a uh, one and a half seconds, you can see the x uh, value there is 1,500 milliseconds. It'll start to ramp down.
Now, as we mentioned in class, you could, of course, build this into your queue when you create uh, the queues for your project in Audacity or in Logic or whatever DAW you're using. You could have it fade out automatically. But the nice thing about this is it allows you to sort of fine tune things in the moment. You know, let's say during the performance, if you'd rather it fade out after five seconds, if you want it to be a little longer, a little bit shorter, it gives you a little bit of flexibility. Uh, this kind of automation in Max is, is really powerful. Um, just to explore a little bit more, right here in this example, we're using it. We're using the function object to control um, the gain of a gain object. Uh, we can use the function object to control the pitch of, let's say, a sine wave. Um, now we've controlled the pitches of uh, sine waves before with various modulators. You can look at the previous videos. It's really important to understand the logic of what's going on there. Um, so if we were to modulate this with another, the pitch of this sine wave with another sine wave, you get this uh, frequency modulation that goes up and down at a consistent rate, uh, and it's it's a very particular sound. But let's say if all you want is for uh, a very precise motion of the pitch, let's say you want it to start high, go a little bit lower, go up to almost where it was, and then go all the way down, uh, then you would use this function object, and it allows you to really precisely control uh, the contours of, of essentially any parameter in max. So instead of scaling between 0 and 127, you, we don't really want, uh, if we want to hear this sine wave, this of course has to be within the threshold of human hearing, above 20 hertz. Uh, but what you want to remember is that this is scaling the input between 0 and 1 to whatever the output is. So you have to define what your highest and lowest pitches are that you want to be. Let's say you want to start uh, at an A and go down a little bit and then end at an A an octave below. So we would put two values, let's say 440 uh, and 220, which are the corresponding frequencies of A an octave higher and an octave lower. Um, and if we attach this to our easy DAC object, let's actually put it through a gain. It's always good practice to be able to control volume. Um, then you'll hear Interesting. Ah, very interesting. So I actually reversed these. Uh, so the zero is 440. Down here would be 440 and up here would be 220. So I reversed these two arguments. Excellent. So now we should here start at A, dip down a little bit, go back up, and then go down an octave. Pretty simple, but very, very effective tool. Of course, it does this over the course of five, sec five seconds. If you wanted it over the course of one second, you would just change the domain. Let's exaggerate that a little more. If you wanted it to span two octaves, So this is a really, really powerful, uh, powerful object. You know, we can of course also use this to control uh, playback speed, scale from zero to one, and let's say uh, negative 0.5 to 0.5. Let's use that same envelope to control the playback speed of this playlist object. Just hit play manually. It's pretty cool. Uh, instead of negative playback speed, because we're getting a lot of stuff uh, in a zero range, let's do from 0.9 to 1.4. See what happens. So 
get some really interesting results. Um, I'll attach this to the play button right here just so we can get a uh, slightly easier interface. I'll set the domain to seven seconds. You can hear it going down and going back up. Let's loop it. And as you can hear, once it reaches this number, it stays there. Okay, so the function object is really, really powerful. I would recommend you take a little bit of time and explore it. Um, of course, the help file is incredibly useful. Uh, dig into this. Um, it gets pretty advanced pretty quickly, but for our purposes, what you need to know really is that you trigger it with a button. You set the domain with a set domain and a value in milliseconds message. You have to click on that in order to change it. Uh, you draw whatever contour you like in here. You can delete points by shift, uh, uh, shift, pressing shift and click. Um, and then the second outlet of the function object goes into a line object. And this allows us to ramp between all the values over the course of this duration. Uh, these values are usually, the default is between zero and one. So then we want to scale between 0 and 1, and then whatever two output values, the range that we want. Um, and you can use this to control absolutely any parameter in Max that can be controlled with numbers. Of course, that's one of the really powerful things about this. Uh, so take a little bit of time, play with it, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.